Hey guys! Welcome back to Let's Play Xenosaga Episode 3! Last time! We ignored that talking, and we also decided we needed to come here in order to get some Vessels of Anima. And get a med kit. And the way forward is uh, blocked off here, so we have to uh, go out the side door. Do note there is a chest down there for much, much later. Well, not much, much later, but later. We will have to come back here at some point. Now, do also note that I think, based on about two minutes of testing, that I have found a way to eliminate all of the uh, lighting switches and hopefully have no more lag in any of the scenes. Why it took me this long to figure it out, I don't know, but let's hope. Again, two minutes of testing. That number. What is it, Xi'an? Cosmos, do you know where this door leads? If it is the same as 15 years ago, the special equipment transport elevator, which connects to the acute neurosis treatment facility, lies ahead. I knew it. It connects to Mom's room. Hey, what's up? Something happened? No, nothing. Let's go. Okay, just to kind of go back on my soapbox from an episode or two ago about Junior not really making a whole lot of sense with a lot of his lines and the delivery of a lot of his lines just being somewhat off. The fact that he just heard what happens, knew that Xion's mother was sick in a facility somewhere, presumably on Milsha, considering that's where Xion's from, and the fact that he couldn't put this together when we first at, at this stage, considering when we first met him, when that would have been something he would have easily put together. They build him up as this really intelligent character in the first game, a really emotional character toward the end of that game, and an emotional character in the second game. Now he's just kind of here. It's, again, just, it bothers me how much they've changed his character. But, anyway, enough of that. So we can't go up there. Do note this is the same elevator that we saw, or at least a different stop or a different floor from the same elevator we saw when we came into the hospital part of the building and took a uh, controller. There we go. Yeah, if you approach it, it forces you to press the button and then slowly walks you away. It's kind of weird. But uh, yeah, we saw that when we got went to go visit Dr. Mizrahi earlier. Not that we can do anything about that now. All right, this All door is locked. We will be able to come back through here later on, but uh, just kind of remember that there is a locked door early on. Once we get back out through here, we'll want to head down. Okay, so let's take care of uh, two of the enemies, one here and one right over here. Blow these guys up here. I don't think we get anything. Uh, I have already found a slight hiccup in the new settings. Uh, Basically, the only spot it seems to give me grief right now, shut up, is when I'm trying to enter commands in battle. Like, any of the battle animations are fine, it's just switching to and from, say, techs or special attacks causes momentary slowdown for like half a second. It's kind of weird. I just don't know how the emulation uh, hasn't come far enough at this point that these just would all work properly. No alternative path, so we must take this elevator, which we cannot take because it is locked. Shut up. I don't think we can do anything by going down here, but as you can see, there's uh, that's kind of the way we already came from. So you get a, a better idea of where we are. Get some free healing going. And there's also slowdown in the shop menu, but that would always happen before, too, so... I don't think there's anything new we can buy, so let's just get on out of there. Come on, open the door. There you go. Alright, so more enemies to deal with in here, and more items. Okay, finished off that battle. believe there's a few more of these guys. This guy's guarding the door. I can avoid him, but there is one more down here. Okay, I took care of both of those enemies there, and of course there's no items. I think this door is locked, but I can't recall, so let's try it. Okay, it's not. Oh, right this one. There's just down here. Update file. I was thinking that this was a different one, and there should be a just right here. Containing Jim's 
or Jim. No, 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 not not watching Star Trek, playing Xenosaga, Jin's swimsuit. And the thought that I just had in my head of Kirk wearing a swimsuit is scary. Very, very scary. Let's try and wash that away with anything else. More battles? Something? Somebody? Blow up a couple more of those guys. Uh, this door here. Uh, let's just head in here. There's some enemies in here we'll take out off screen. Okay, finished off you. Let's grab a D-frame. And we can head out this other side door. I don't think there's anything else floating around there. This guy is a bit of a lazy bastard and he's sleeping. And all these things blowing up doesn't seem to do anything for him. So let's just grab all these items. Go, get some money. Money's always good. Blow up those ones. Now well, let's blow up the last one. That one wakes him up. Yeah, and after that, we get nano repair, which is pretty much fine. And the reason why Chaos is on there is just because I ended up switching characters with my formation. There we go. No big reason, I'm just trying to balance out levels. All right, another one. Yeah, this dungeon is unfortunately rather thick with battles. There's pretty much every screen you're gonna run into like three enemies. And then, once you get around that, first you want to head down here, uh, you'll end up getting stuck with large cutscenes! Yeah. Yeah. Alright, I don't think we can do anything here. It just shows you a door down there that we'll be able to do something with later. Oh, this one. Alright, let's blow up all these. Which all contain absolutely nothing. Now, here is a puzzle. This one's rather important that you get right, so I'm just going to double check my notes on this one to make sure I don't screw it up, and I will see you in a moment. Alright, I just wanted to make sure that that was going to work out. Now, they give you very little explanation if you look at the red button in the bottom left of the screen. That will kind of explain some of what goes on here, but it's still rather confusing. Basically, you hit the square button on a block, and it'll move any other blocks on its side. So if I hit this one, the one right below it will move down until it hits something. Now, in this case, I'm going to hit it down, and it's going to move two of them that are right next to it. So, yeah, it's kind of like that. And the idea here is we need to blow up uh, these... put these dynamite thingies on these green thingies to blow up the doors so we can move forward. So you want to hit the one in the middle, you want to hit the one down, and then you want to hit the one right, and then right once again. A. All access to standby hangar and storage is cut off. Now, once you've gotten two on there, and you blow them both up, you get what looks like, oh look, we got a little bit of money for completing our quest. We'll go back for that later. It's not like it's going to be a big deal or anything. It's not like they would put something completely game-breaking right there. I just got 50,000 G. When I first saw this, I was like, wait, what? Yeah, I hit 5,000 G before. 50,000. I just got 10 times what I had. That's ridiculous. And that's not the only big amount of money we're going to get in the relatively near future, so it's kind of weird that they set it up like that, but anyway, make absolutely certain that you get that, because that is very, very valuable. And we can trigger a cutscene here. What's that? Oh, right, I forgot to press the thing. Actually, give me a sec here. Okay, I'm going to switch back to the lower light level uh, through the settings, just because I'm having, what to my ear anyway, it sounds like there's delay in the audio, even though the frame rate's not showing it, so just to make it sound better. I don't better. care about you obsessing over that doll of your daughter, but I can't have you forgetting the real objective. The operation has already begun. You and Winnicott formulated it. Mm -hmm. I don't see why you need me. I'm going to take over the management of this experiment. If you've lost your nerves, do as you wish. It's no longer my concern. Is that 
How many times are we gonna ask that? God, that is so frustrating with this game. They just ask that every time we see this guy. He's the only one who looks like this. Anyway, time for a better scene. As you might guess, Momo's probably been looking to do this, this for quite some for time. Uh, um, I'm sorry. I got lost. Lost in the past. <laughs> You're not very good at lying, young lady. Do you think you could give me a hand? Not a crazy madman. Oh, okay. Emulators. What kind of research are you doing, Professor? Hmm? Actually, I'm making a realian like you. What? I I'm not a... You don't have to hide it. I can tell. Yeah, those yellow eyes are a dead giveaway. I lost my daughter to illness. I thought that if I could retrieve her consciousness, I might be able to return her to life. Now, it's hard to say how much Joachim realizes at this point, since obviously he modeled Momo after Sakura, his daughter, and so technically he should look at her as like, you look exactly like my daughter, exactly like the reality I'm building, why? But he doesn't do that, so either he realizes something's going on and this actually is the uh, reality that he's trying to create, or he's completely clueless. Either way, the fact that they don't explain it really doesn't make any sense. Um, if he realizes it and just kind of is like, okay, we'll just have a nice kind of father-daughter moment, that's fine. But I would have liked a little more of a hint at it so the audience knew what was going on and not just him. So I studied the UMN, the Zohar, and Udu for that purpose. Reviving the consciousness of the dead? Yes. The Unis Mundus Network, just as its name implies, is a collective subconscious that's existed since the moment the universe was born. Yeah, so they've talked about in the past that we don't know a lot about the UMN, although we know that Victor, or Victor, Vector manages it. And... The government kind of works on that as well, but most of it's done from, uh, I believe, second Milsha. Now, we were there in the second game, but we they've kind of tiptoed around what exactly this is. Now we know it's a collective subconscious, basically working off of uh, a lot of psychological and philosophical theories that the human race has a collective subconscious and a collective unconscious. Um, I think part of that might work into like a belief in reincarnation, but I'm not sure. Uh, but basically, that's the, the gist of what we're going for here. It's a fundamental part of nature. Through my research of the Zohar, I discovered the existence of what appears to be human consciousness within the UMN. Consciousnesses are born from the UMN and they return to the UMN. Now, I could splice in a clip from Final Fantasy VII, but I'm not going to, but the reference is still there. If I could discover that process, I could fulfill my wish. But my daughter's consciousness has disappeared. The other parallel you can draw here is for Vernum. Uh, Grimoire Vernum was looking for his daughter lost in uh, the UMN or lost in subconsciousness or connection experiment, or we don't really know. Basically, uh, Nephilim was his daughter, lost somewhere, presumably the UMN, I believe that they've flat out said that, and that's kind of where he was looking for her. Joachim is doing much the same thing. The new consciousness, which is growing, is not hers. No. Oh. But I think that's all right. 
And that's what makes me think that he actually does know that this is Momo. Because other than, you know, frame differences or clothing differences, she should look basically identical to what he's creating, right? And I don't think, because she's railing, she's uh, biological, I don't think, like, Cosmos, she can just change her frame. But, and I also don't know if she grows or not. I don't believe so, based on the fact that none of the other 100 series seem to. But any of the changes to her facial structure or anything like that seem to just be changes to the game's graphical engine, not in terms of what she actually looks like, just what they're able to recreate. This child will surely become the hope of all realians. That hope may become a way to stop the looming threat of the expansion of the universe. Our second daughter. I'm sure Sakura would have wanted that. Her name was Sakura? Yes. My wife and I came up with the name together. She was a cute child just like you. This world must continue to exist for you and others. I must stop them. Who? Definitely not the crazy person we've been led to believe he was. Oh, I'm sorry for making you listen to the ramblings of an old man. Now go. I'm sure there are people worried about you. Why he decided to say this to some random strange person, unless he recognized her, really doesn't make any sense. Considering they were ten feet away, this should not have taken them so long, but oh well. I talked with Daddy. He called me his second daughter. He said he's going to protect the world for us. I... I... Yeah, I'm happy for you, Momo. Yeah, this is like, what, the next time we see them kind of embrace together? Even though their relationship has kind of been developed since episode one. And then they just kind of forgot about it in the first half. And even a lot of episode two, for that matter. I don't think we can do anything with any of the stuff here. And of course, this is locked, so we can't go up there. Uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much all for that room. So, let's continue on. More enemies. No more enemies. Right. Um, you know what? That's probably going to do her because I believe upcoming is a longer cutscene. So, to avoid making this another 25 to 30 minute episode, we're just going to call her here. So, that's all for this one. And I'll see you guys next time.